Hi, Annette here. Welcome back to my Rug Cook and Talk Show. Okay, so I got a nice hot cup of orange spice tea. It's the afternoon here in Connecticut, and I'm working away on my, hooking away on my granddaughter's hooked rug. So go ahead and get something nice and warm. Uh, if you're up in the north, absolutely, it's still a little cool out, but hey, 52 degrees today in this neck of the woods, so it was nice to be out. Um, so get something cool to drink if you're in Hawaii or wherever you're watching me warm and settle in. Um, so I've been working and hooking away on the background. So I want you to give you a little shot of that. Um, I am, let's see if I can do this. Okay. So, um, if you could see, I've hooked around the motifs which are your little main characters I like to think of in your rug, your main subject, whether it's whatever, houses, f flowers, uh, diamonds, whatever you're hooking away. What I like to do, and I'm sure most rug hooking teachers will tell you, to before you start your background, a lot of people, a lot of rug hookers prefer to do a holding line or just, uh, you know, I never called it that, but that's what I'm hearing it's called. And it's just to keep and hold the shape of the motif a little sharper, a little crisper, um, if that in fact is what you're looking for. Um, so for something like this, I would, I would like that. Um, for something more abstract, maybe not, and you would hook your background any which way you prefer. So uh, as you could see, I've done all, I think I've done all, let's just check. <laughs> okay, no, I'm still working on this bunny and I have one more um, butterfly to do uh, a hook around it with my a background color and um, I used pretty much you know the color variations that I'm using are not all that dramatically different in contrast to each other they're very subtle shades of pink a few different tones maybe three four five tops um, so you know I just used whatever I felt was comfortable around that particular motif. Um, sometimes you might want to use a much lighter of the shade if, in fact, the motif is more on the lighter side to give it a little more contrast. Um, there you go. So it's up to your discretion what you're looking at. So that's what I've been doing so far. And I'm pretty much excited because when we get to the background, I love hooking away on the background. It's very relaxing, a lot less thinking, and... Um, which could be good or bad. You know, you want to think about something when you're doing it, but it's just nice. It's like the mindless part of, you know, when you're knitting, if you're just doing straight knitting all the way through like a blanket or an afghan or a scarf, it's nice to have that kind of mindless, easy knitting, so to speak. And um, so good, settle in and join me. And I want you to show you today because there might be some new rug hookers watching the show. So what I want to say to you is you don't have to spend a lot of money. If you've been watching my shows from the past, you've, you've heard me say that before. This can be as frugal as you would like it to be, and you can spend as much money as you're able to. So I like to just uh, tell people out there that are starting to rug hook, don't get caught off guard or pull back because you're like, oh my gosh, the rug hooks, $50, and, you know, f rug hooking frames, $200, and wool, you know, $36 a yard. Do not even go there because that is not necessary. There was a very efficient, frugal, economical way to rug hook, and I like to incorporate all of it into my rug hooking. So um, today I'm going to show you on an old wooden frame that I had bought from Harry Fraser many years ago. Um, for the older rug hookers out there that have been rug hooking away, not by age, just by many years already. Harry M. Frazier was a big rug hooking company and apparently was up north, I think possibly even in Connecticut, not quite sure, but I think, uh, many, many years ago. And then they went down, I guess, to North Carolina or down south, or correct me if I'm wrong, so go for it. Anyway, they relocated and they went away from Connecticut. And so they had the greatest supplies I remember buying a box of what they called remnants back then. And you could even ask for what color you would like in there. If it was browns, you got all browns. And it was, um, I think, by the pound. And so you could buy, I think it was like $5 a pound or something. It was pretty inexpensive. I remember spending $20 once and I got a huge crate of 
the most beautiful wool remnants that you could think of. Some small pieces, you know, end mill run ends, uh, mill ends, and um, you know, maybe an odd piece that was cut and you know, small pieces, maybe 10 by 20s. And I love those because I would get all different colors. You can get it by weight. It had skirt weight, it had um, shirt weight, and it had lightweight. And it was great, great fun to get them because you'd look through them. Anyway. They no longer do that. That's gone. You, we're never going to see that. That was, gosh, probably 20 years ago when that happened. And um, But anyway, so let me just share with you. And you've seen it before, my little rug frame. Okay. Let me just grab it again. Okay, so. Okay, we're loaded up here. Let me get some stuff out of the way. Okay, here we go. So, as you can see. This was my little rug cooking frame that I had bought from them um, a long time ago. I don't know if it has the little sticker in it anymore, but it had a little sticker and it said Harry M. Frazier. Anyway, it's just wood and it's very, uh, as you can see, it's very uh, flexible. It turns and it was meant to be able to be t taken apart very quickly. Uh, one, two, three, four screws and it's done. It folds down and you can take it with you in your luggage and that's what it was meant to do, put it in a tote. So, um, any, oh, here it is, the little, the little gold thing. Okay, Harry M. Frazier. Okay, Stoneville, North Carolina. That was where it used to be. Okay, so this little frame that I got, it has a nice little tray as you can see, was $29 back then. Okay, and I, before, before internet time came and I was able to go on the internet and actually look at websites and see things, there really was no way to see anything except for a little print picture and a brochure. So there was a lot of catalogs that circulated with rug hooking uh, back then and you ordered their catalogs. Some sent them for free, some did not. Um, some of the earlier names were Patsy Becker and... Um, Gosh, I'm trying to think of some other. Claire Murray had a catalog, and there's just so many. There were so many. Harry Frazier had one, and um, Joan Moshimer Cushing's, I think. Anyway, there was a whole bunch, and that was how you got around, and that's how you ordered your pattern. You sat and you actually leafed through a great catalog with all these pretty designs in front of you until the Internet came, and now you order everything through the Internet. So, um, at the time I had ordered this one, I had ordered a second one for my daughter. She didn't quite take to rug cooking. That's okay. I have a second one. And so today I just realized I would like to also turn that into uh, another rug cooking frame like this. And what I was going to do was actually go ahead and start putting the rug grip on it. And when I mean by rug grip, let's not confuse it with the carpet tacking or carpet grip that they call that they use on um, most of the, the rug hooking frames that you see. They'll have um, carpet tacking and they're these little sharp things. Um, sometimes they're very fine, sometimes they're a little coarser and um, the, the burlap or your monk's cloth, your backing, hooks onto them really well. And uh, people put a, a padding so you're not hurting your arms because I hear that you scratch your arms. I don't use them. Uh, only because I do hook with uh, yarn once in a while, and I like to have the freedom of not having to worry about it pulling out my my hooking. So anyway, so this is, you know what, and again, you could also use, this is rug grip, and, no, actually, I'm sorry, I beg to differ. This was rug grip, I think, and I use, this is a shelf liner. Same stuff as rug grip, really, carpet uh grip. It's, it's got like a rubberized feel to it so things don't slide around. Anyway, so that's what I use. You can buy a small roll of it at Walmart. I got this at Walmart, I don't know, four or five dollars or something like that. So uh, what I was going to do today was just go ahead and show you, uh, for you new newbies out there, that um, this is a very economical, easy way. Now you're going to say, Annette, I can't go to Harry Frazier and order these. No, you cannot. <laughs> but I'll tell you who does have this one, a frame very similar. It does not tilt, but it is great. And it's on, it would look like this. Figure it would look like this. If you were looking at it, and it would have four posts as opposed to the two center ones. So no, it can't fold down, but it's small enough to put in a tote. 
I believe it's 16 by 25, and that's a pretty nice, decent size, okay? So I will show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to lay it right on my rug over here. And you can order that from yankeepeddler.com. She's up the street from me, a couple of towns over in Killingworth. So $28 plus some postage, and you will get this lovely similar item to it in the mail. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of show you, let's see if the lighting, is that better for you? Okay, I'm going to just show you what to do with this so that you can, if you do go ahead and order the $28 frame, like my God, all my rugs, except for the last like four or five, have been hooked on this and I love it. And if I had to and my Anderson frame broke, I absolutely would have no problem going back to it. It doesn't swivel. But if you put it on a slippery surface, um, you can turn it very easily by putting a piece of felt underneath. I've done all these fun things to kind of uh, upgrade them. And you know what? It's cheap, it's inexpensive, and off you go. And the felt works nice if you're working on your dining room table and you want to easily turn it, and you, uh, as long as you don't have a tablecloth on it, obviously. Now, if you have a tablecloth on it, what you could do, and you keep a tablecloth on your table and you still want to hook as opposed to putting felt underneath, you would just put a piece of plastic sheeting that you could buy at the local Joann's, Michael's. Uh, it comes off the bolt, and it's just a very slippery plastic, and that glides, makes everything slippery. So that's uh, what you could do. So as you could see over here, I went and, can you see? I'm not sure. I outlined it. There you go, a little better. I outlined it. It looks like just the frame part of this. So I'm going to go and just cut that out, and, um, and I'm doing this because, you know what, not everybody wants to spend a whole bunch of money on their hobby, and you shouldn't have to because the women years ago uh, didn't. Now, don't get me wrong. I have an Anderson frame, and I love it, and I had to spend some money on it. I think back then when I bought it, it was $85. I'm not saying you shouldn't have these wonderful tools because tools make your, your craft um, easier and it could make it uh, more enjoyable to you if you have some sort of health issue, uh, whether it's you know arthritis or something like that. But what I'm saying is if you can't and you don't want to, you just, you just don't want to do that, invest that kind of money into something that you say, hey, you know what? I'm not sure I want to continue doing this for the rest of my life. So I really would just like something a little bit less expensive. $28 and $5 for some rug grip and um, some clamps. You need to buy the clamps. And those you can get off of Amazon. And you can get the other clamps. Let me show you those. I'll use two different types of clamps. And they both, this holds it very well. It does not have rug. It does not have a rubbery grip inside, but because they're so tight, they hold really well. These do have a rubber grip inside on each side, so when they clamp down onto the, it's not going anywhere. They hold really well. Uh, these are at OXO brand, and these you can get at any stationery store. These are from Amazon, so you get a package of six, I think, and. I think I ordered two sets, and you're, you're set. You're good to go. And there we go. Okay, so this is cut out, and this is what we're left with, okay? We're left with this square, okay? And so what I'm going to do is, see, originally, this was meant to be used with thumbtacks. And uh, clearly it works. Clearly it was very annoying, and it wasn't something I wanted to, to work with. Some people don't mind, but oop, you know what? I'm going to have to see if this is even working. I bought it, but it's always kind of a little dried out. Let's see. Okay, no, it looks okay. Let's give it a... Let's try it again. I don't want to get it on me. Okay. Uh, back to the thumbtacks. Thumbtacks, here we go. Thumbtacks... Um, once this is in place, by the way, you don't want to touch it because it'll, it'll goo up through the, the little spaces on here. So, you know, however you want to glue it on, whatever little designs you want to make, that's fine. 
Um, I just go around the perimeter, and you want to do both sides of the perimeter. And the thumbtacks become very wearing on your fingers, and I personally don't want to keep sticking thumbtacks in my rug. And, you know, I just felt like I didn't. Did I hope I didn't get glue on here? Okay. Okay, so here we go. This is pretty much the whole idea of it. it it's not that complicated. And you have a, a minute or two to change it up if it moves around. Okay. Just tamp it down a little. There you go. Okay. That's it. That is pretty much it. Okay. So, looking for a tissue or a napkin. Here we go. Excuse me. So, basically, that's the first side. Okay. So, you know what? It, Like I said, it comes apart and it comes off. So, when this is dried like this, what you're going to do is take it off and you're going to turn it over and you're going to do the other side. Same thing. It is so simple and easy to do. And that's pretty much how you make a very inexpensive frame into a frame where you can use your clamps. And they just clamp on, bam, like that. And so I would give this a good, like, overnight to dry and then do the next one the next day. And then after, you know, giving that another overnight, you're good to go and you can hook away. And believe me, this works so good. So there you go. I'll let that rest for overnight, and I now have a second frame. And sometimes I do experimenting. Um, and that's another fun thing, you know, if you want to experiment, you get another inexpensive frame, and you can have somebody else hooking or, or just try some stuff out on it. So you, if you're working on something else, you know, it's always nice to have. This is the Gorilla Glue. This is the only glue I would recommend what else works really good um, besides Gorilla Glue is your tacky glue. I, I guess it's super tacky. Let me just check. Okay. And here we go. You got that one? That works really good too. And it dries clear. So there you go. Uh, Aileen's Turbo Tacky. So there you go. Those are those are my recommendations uh, for starting out in an inexpensive way to get a, a very inexpensive frame. And I'm going to say it again. I'm going to put it in a blog for you, yankeepeddler.com, located here in Connecticut. And you can call her up and she'll get back to you. Just leave your name and number. You can email her. Just put in the subject line what you're interested in and she will email you back. And uh, her her frames and I spoke to her today and she again confirmed they are $28 and it has a little tray in it an open tray not a tray that comes around like that um, so not a big deal I mean clearly you can add a, a few pieces of wood around it you could even do you know um, you know you could sure put something around that you know if you look and you just hold a spot for your uh, uh, supplies in there. You could even glue down a little box, a little plastic Tupperware box. You can glue that down with some uh, tacky glue or some Gorilla Glue. It works really good to just hold your stuff in place. If you have a little cardboard box, like a stationary box that's shallow, you can glue down a whole bunch of those. And those work good. You can put your pins in one and your, you know, your hooks in another and stuff like that. You know, needles, whatever you you want to put in there. Your um, little markers for making designs, a pair of small uh, scissors. These are my big ones, but a pair of scissors would be good to put in there too. So there you go. And her hers is 16 by 12, I believe she said. So yeah, you're talking about, let me see, I don't have my measuring tape up here. Let's see where is it? Okay, here we go. I'll give you some measurements. This one is 12. Okay, sir, let's see what this one is. It's 12, 13, 14. Okay, so it's just a tad, maybe an inch bigger than that one over there. So, um, 
that's pretty good pretty good size and I like the movability of it it's nice you can turn it around and if you have a nice space that you're hooking you can put it in your lap absolutely okay so um, that's what I wanted to share with rug cooking but I have like eight minutes left before this camera shuts down and I just wanted to share one more thing okay I knit on a loom and I've shared that with you and I know I have some some viewers who are knitters too um so oh, here we go it fell no big deal okay so this is what i'm working on i'm going to make an infinity scarf and uh this is let me see if i put that down you have better vision over here if you could see i don't know if you could see but there's actually like a very faint striping effect can you see that let's see. oh okay there you go that might be better if you could see every like two inches there's a, like a goldish stripe I did not know that existed when I bought the yarn, and it is, let's see if I can get this here, it's the Woolies, thick and quick, um, and so it's, it's self-striping to some crazy effect, and I didn't know if anybody else knew that out there, but if you're looking for something like that, it's the Lion, uh, Lion brand Woolies thick and quick, the tweed has, um, a, a, a striping effect to it there we go okay there you can go so there I was so excited because I thought it was kind of boring when I was hooking uh, 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 loom knitting this and I was so excited as I put it down and I stepped back from it when I entered the room I was like oh my gosh look that has a stripe in it so there you go doesn't take too much to get me happy as you could see <laughs> and so that was, I'm still working on the first skein, and I think it's a two-skein infinity scarf because it's got to be made kind of on the big side. Okay. All righty. So there you go. Okay. And I just wanted to say I'm enjoying this, and I, I'm hoping that you're kind of getting something out of this. If you're new to rug cooking and whatever I'm sharing that you could use for good information, and that's what this is about. So if you're a lone hooker stuck off someplace uh, where there aren't other rug hookers that you can connect with, then join me in my rug hooking talk show and you always have somebody to rug hook with. So again, I want to thank you for joining me and being part of the group. And hopefully soon we'll see each other again. So stay well and happy hooking.